Good morning. Welcome everyone to this, the second Sunday of Easter. Special welcome to anyone who may be visiting with us this morning. I invite you to open up your bulletins and there's a number of things I want to draw your attention to. You notice that there's an insert from the Lions around kidney donation and organ donation. I invite you to peruse that and read that at your leisure. Sorry, lions and lionesses. <laughs> Very well. Um, we also have our birthday box out this morning. Who has had a birthday here in April? Oh, all on that side, is it? <laughs> Evelyn's had a birthday and Gloria and Debbie. And who else? Etta. Say your name. Etta. Etta, thank you. Sorry, didn't catch it the first time. And who else? Jennifer. Jennifer. Oh, we've had a few birthdays. Well, congratulations to, we, to you all. We will sing happy birthday. And then if you want to come forward and drop some coinage out of your pocket into our birthday box that will go into the mission and service fund. Let's sing. <laughs> I missed, uh, I missed Marilyn, <laughs> who also had a birthday here in April. So congratulations to you all. Nobody wanting to divulge their, their actual age? No. It's no secret. Well, there you go. I'll ask around later. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you as well to those who made memorial donations in support of our Easter Sunday music. Much appreciated. Just a note that I will be away this week on study leave, and so I won't be here next Sunday, but the worship team will be leading the service. Of course, we have coming up the yard sale and the Rawlings Cross. Lots of things happening. There will be no Bible study this week as I'm away. Lots of things up and coming. We're gonna be offering some more guided meditation sessions on Tuesdays beginning May 7th, so take a look at that. Um, and we got news just this Thursday that we are going to get funding for a youth program coordinator for the summer. If you know somebody, a grandchild, a child who's back from university for the summer and looking for a job, we've got one for them. Encourage them to apply, please. And last but not least, I want to make note of our charitable tax receipts and our envelopes. Please shred, recycle, get rid of all of your 2017, 2018 old offering envelopes and only use the 2019 ones. We're not able to uh, receipt for previous ones in many cases because your numbers have changed over the years and this becomes a bit of an issue for us to keep track of. As well, if you are on par or if you're visiting, someone you know is visiting, and they don't have offering envelopes, we have these blank envelopes at the back of the sanctuary by the offering plates and you're encouraged to fill in your name and address as well as, of course, the amount that you're giving. And so if you don't have offering envelopes, you need to put your name and address on every time that you make a donation and use the envelope, please. This will make it a lot easier for us when it comes to receiving those donations. That's all of my announcements, but 
Sometimes this Sunday after Easter is called Holy Humor Sunday, so I've got a little thing for you that I thought was kind of cute. Brian Tranum actually brought it this, in this week. This is a quote from a poster that was found in a church in France. When you enter this church, it may be possible that you hear the call of God. However, it's unlikely that he will call you on your mobile. Thank you for turning off your phones. If you want to talk to God, enter, choose a quiet place and talk to him. If you want to see him, send him a text while driving. <laughs> so anyways, I thought that was kind of cute. <laughs> Let us begin our worship together. This is the light of Christ, a promise of love. As we gather, we remember that we live and work on the historic lands of the Mi'kmaq. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with its peoples. Please stand and join in singing our introit, This is the Day That God Has Made. people. Let us enter into the joy of the risen Christ. Please be seated. I invite you to join with me as we say together our opening prayer. Holy One, the completion of your compassion often seems far away. Yet in this time of worship, we claim compassion's promise. The fulfillment of your peace seems out of reach. Yet in this time of worship, we claim the promise of peace. The headlines daily negate the accomplishment of your justice. Yet in this time of worship, we claim the promise of justice. In this time of worship, we gather to rekindle and reclaim the strength we find in you. So when we leave this place, we will do so as witnesses to your resurrection love. Amen. The God of resurrection is our cornerstone, the foundation of our strength and hope. Thanks be to God. Our hymn is number 216, Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above, 216.
us turn to our neighbors and greet them offering the peace of Christ. So today we're talking about Jesus coming back to life and the disciples are experiencing Jesus. And it's a little bit too about how we can experience Jesus even today, even though we can't see him or touch him. And this story I've got for you is called Till We Meet Again. And it's about, it's about death and grieving. Someone very close has died and now it hurts deep down inside. It's not the same as feeling sad. None of my bumps ever hurt this bad. How did this happen? Where did you go? Is this something anyone knows? Why did this happen? How can this be that someone I love is no longer here with me? So this is what the disciples must have been thinking. Wait, did I hear someone whispering? Is it possible something special is happening? What could this be? Listen, what do I hear? I can feel that you are near. Spirit says, sleep, dear child, you need your rest. When you wake, you will feel refreshed. It will take time, but you will see. I will show you ways to remember me. I'm not gone, just out of sight, safe and happy and full of light. So that's like what Jesus would say to the disciples too as they struggle with his death. Now you'll feel my warm embrace when the wind moves your hair or the sun kisses your face. Love endures. Even when you dream, you'll find that I will come and visit from time to time. It's okay to feel sad that is when you should remember the fun we had. Tell our stories to those we know. Your memories will make their hearts glow. Love our people and laugh with them too. They feel sad just like you. That's what the disciples did. They got together and they shared their stories and their memories of Jesus so that they could keep that alive. Now I need something from you, my dear. It's the best way to keep me near. Remember the things I did best that made you feel so loved and blessed. These are things you can do too. Then through your actions, I live on through you. Oh. So how does Jesus live on in us? 
through our actions, right? Yeah. All the joys that you gave me will always be cherished and dear to me. I had a wonderful life and you will too if love is your guiding light. There's no need to worry, no need to hide. Whenever you need me, I'll be by your side. Someday we'll meet again. Until then, remember my hugs and my warm embrace and know that your love will always bring a smile to my face. Oh. That's the last one. Oh, nope. This world is not our home. We are just passing through. Someday we will meet again. Until then, remember, I love you. So Jesus is sending his love to all of us, even now. Even though we can't see him and we know that he's not here, we can't touch him in that way, we know that he's all around us all the time, helping us to remember and to live his way through our actions. And this is how it is with other people that may die in our lives too. Might be a pet, might be a grandparent, might be a neighbor. When people die, that's right, they're not, they're not here with us in the same way any longer, but we have to know that they still love us and we still love them and that love endures forever. Okay? Shall we say a little prayer? Oh. Loving God, we thank you for being close to us. Help us to feel your presence and to live as Jesus did. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You can head off to Sunday school now as we sing together. Very helpful.
Our first reading today is from the book of Acts, from chapter 5, verses 27 to 32. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Hear the word of God from ages past. May they reveal a timeless truth. The Gospel reading comes from chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, and Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, 
unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. So a week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Hear the story of God's great love for us. And let us sing together hymn number 164, The Day of Resurrection, 164. Please be seated. Let us pray. God of the unexpected, you make us all witnesses to the good news of the risen Christ. Help us to find the courage to not remain silent, but always speak out for truth, justice, and life and love in our lives and for our world. Amen. The apostles Peter and John have witnessed the unexpected when they came into contact with the risen Christ. It was such a shocking and unpredictable experience 
that they could not keep the good news to themselves. They began to share their story with anyone who would listen, and this made them a target of the Jewish and Roman authorities like Jesus had been. Jesus' courage in the face of death gave Peter and John the courage they needed to speak the truth. After all, it was up to them and the other apostles to continue Jesus' work and spread his message of God's compassion and justice. You may wonder why the 12 disciples are now being referred to as apostles in the book of Acts after Jesus' death. It's because they are no longer followers, but rather have the authority to speak on Jesus' behalf. According to the Dictionary of Theological Terms, disciple is defined as one who follows and learns from another as a pupil or a student. And apostle is defined as one who is sent to act on the authority of another. This passage that we heard from Acts serves as a reminder to us all that as Christians we are challenged to speak out and to share the good news of God's love. It also serves to reassure us that this message cannot be silenced, no matter how many may try. Many people this weekend have flocked to the Marvel Universe finale film, Endgame. If you hadn't heard about this, it's big. <laughs> They're hoping to see how superheroes save the day and good triumphs over bad. This age-old story of hope and encouragement first made its debut in religion tens of thousands of years ago. And in the world today, we still hunger to hear this message. So much so that the movie has already made $310 million. Wow. Now, I haven't seen the movie, so I'm not going to put any spoilers in there for those of you who are wanting to check it out. But I assume that Endgame will follow the common format, that it will be full of warring and combat, that there may be some instances of death, but in the end, there will be a final triumph over the evil villains who are trying to spread a darkness in the universe. While many seek to find comfort and a message of faith within the movie theater, there are always those who would seek to destroy our beliefs. Last week, suicide bombers in Sri Lanka attacked three churches on Easter Sunday and three hotels known to be popular amongst foreigners. They were obviously conducted by religious fanatics who believe violence, fear, and power wielding can undermine thousands of years of teachings based on peace and love. This attack was presumably part of a plan to eradicate, eradicate the minority Christians who only represent about 7% of the population of Sri Lanka. The most popular religion there is Theravada Buddhism, whose teachings are ironically similar to the message of Jesus, as they encourage people to find the peace within themselves through meditation and to work to create positive action in our world. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Our moderator, Richard Bott, expresses well our response to such needless acts of violence. He says, We condemn this horrific act of violence and resist the idea that hatred and brutality could be a faithful response to any religious conviction. 
We pray that throughout the world, people of faith and goodwill continue in efforts to build relationships of respect with neighbors of different faiths, and that together we can work on mending the broken world that gives rise to such acts of terror. Hmm. Even here in Canada, many fear that secularization will push the church to the margins of society, or worse yet, that it marks the death of the United Church or Christianity altogether. Too long, our roles were reversed from those in scriptures. For many years, Christians in Canada enjoyed a position of dominance, and they worked to push out and silence those of differing religious perspectives. We became, like the temple authorities and the Roman leaders, threatened by those who would practice an uncommon or unknown belief system. God forbid they would wear a symbol of their faith, like a star of David, a pentacle, or a turban. Thankfully, we are now more accepting of peoples different from ourselves. And everyone now has the freedom and the right to choose their own religious affiliation in our country. And this is as it should be. But the question remains, will Christianity die away? I don't believe so. There is still something very relevant and attractive about how our superhero, Jesus, with the help of his friends, fights against tyranny and injustice by spreading a message of love and acceptance for all. We too are called to be witnesses to the unexpected nature of the risen Christ who is at work in our lives and in our world. May we accept this position, this role as witnesses and not be silent, but speak out and share the good news. We ask this in God's name. Amen. Come, let us give to the church, for our hearts belong to God, and our gifts are meant for blessing. Let us join in singing together as the offering is presented. We thank you for the countless acts of love, both large and small, that give life. When we are reminded of the kindness and compassion that we have known, our hearts are filled with gratitude for the many ways your love is at work in our world and lives. We dedicate ourselves and these offerings to the power of your eternal love and grace. Amen. Let us come before the Lord our God in a time of prayer. O 
God of the resurrection. We thank you for all the ways that you continue to be revealed to us through the example of Jesus Christ, through the scriptures and stories shared through the actions and words of those who gather with us here today. As we pray, we ask that we might be given the courage and strength to live your will every day, and that we not be ashamed to say, that we are who we are because of your example and our faith. Even so, we pray for those who are persecuted because of their religious beliefs. We pray for the people of Sri Lanka who have been devastated by these bombings. We pray for the family and friends of those 250 plus people who have died. We pray for other places in our world, whether Christian or Muslim, Buddhist or atheist, that people feel they cannot honestly represent themselves and their beliefs without physical threat of their being. We pray for those who are a part of our community here at Trinity St. Stephen's, who are sick and in hospital this day. We remember Rod, Shirley, Jean, Peter, and remember their, their families and those who are supporting them at this time. We bind these prayers with those said in the silence of our hearts and minds as we say together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I appreciate that. I am aware that there are a few other people that may be in hospital other than those named, but as I haven't asked them whether I can publicly announce that, I'll just leave that with you. We're going to sing together our closing hymn, number 168, The Risen Christ, 168.
May we go out with joy, awaken to the treasures within and around us to bring transformation, challenge, and hope to the world. And may the abundant blessings of God, source, Savior, and Spirit be ours today and always. Amen. Thank you.